Nothing excites us like Jesus Cause in his presence there's freedom All of our sin is forgiven So we give to him the highest praise It's the greatest
Hey boys and girls, my name is King Cowboy Carl, and I want to welcome you back to our series called Show Me the Money. Show me the money! Alright, now we're gonna do a quick little recap, okay? So last week we talked about almsgiving, okay? Now, almsgiving is when we receive from the Lord, like receiving a big old tray of cookies from your mama. <laughs> Woo, that sounds good. But we receive from the Lord, and then we want to give it to other people, right? We receive the love of God, and then we give it. We receive, and then we give. Kind of unlike the cookies, because you want to keep those for yourself, because those are real good. Anyway, this week we're going to talk about tithe and first fruits. Man, talking about more food again. I'm getting hungry. Actually, I don't think that's the kind of fruit we're talking about. But we'll see. We'll get there, okay? But right now, we're going to kick it off with the memory verse. So here we go. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Show Me The Money. So, obviously, we were talking about giving and generosity. So what better memory verse than Proverbs 11, 25? And this is what it says. It says, a generous man will prosper, and those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Now you know how this works. You are going to go into your small groups at the end of this session and you are going to talk through all the things that we've talked about in the video, but also go over the memory verse. You come back with it memorized, hence memory verse, and there are opportunities for you to win prizes and to win points for your teams for the big prizes at the end. Now, <clears throat> repeat after me. Say Proverbs 11.25. A generous man will prosper. And those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Okay, now we're gonna say it all together because you totally remember all of that, okay? Proverbs 11, 25. A generous man will prosper, and those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Excellent job, you all pretty much nailed it. So, Go home, practice that, rewatch the video on YouTube, um, get a good idea of what the memory verse is, and come back next week to own it, crush it, and win some points for your team. Now let's kick it on over to the next segment. Yo, what's up, Awaken Kids? Okay, I'm having to really wake up for this, but it's me, Mr. Caleb. I missed you guys. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So today, huh, today, today, I really need to, you know, not be so goofy. But hey, today we're talking about the tithe. And I know, Mr. Caleb, and cue the meme, I'm tired of this, Grandpa. Yeah, I know. We talk about tithe all the time, but it's extremely, extremely, extremely important. We're just gonna dive on into it. So, what's the purpose of tithing? Why do we do it? You know, what's the motivation? Talked about that last week with Miss Olivia, who did a great job. Round of applause. Yay! Okay, the obedience. Okay, that's the motivation behind tithe. Tithing, motivation, obedience. Obedience, tithing. Tithing, obedience. They go hand in hand, all right? Now, who tithes first? Well, there's a lot of speculation on that and the offerings that Cain and Abel did, but the first tithe, first time it's mentioned, is with Abraham. Way, 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 way back in the day, and he tithed to a king named Melchizedek. That's a mouthful, you can even throw that up on the screen and see if they could pronounce it. It's weird, I know. But he tied 10% of his war spoils to Melchizedek, who was the king of Salem and blah, 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 it was awesome. Abraham, though, why did he tithe? Now we all know Abraham is Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so were, yeah, you guys probably don't know that song, that's for all my adults in the room. Not the point. Abraham was the first to step into a covenant or relationship with God that was a trade-off. Does that make sense? So there's a lot to go on that, but the covenant is basically what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine. So Father Abraham, the one who started the covenant with the Lord, uh, was the first to be called to tithe and give 10% to Melchizedek. And then moving forward, all the tithe was was a, a, a offering not only to honor that relationship, but also to help bless those. Like for example, in Malachi 3.10, and I'm gonna go ahead and read it off. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, 
that there may be food in my house and try me now in this. This is the Lord speaking. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. That just sounds awesome, to be honest with you. He's basically saying, test me, which you're not supposed to do. And he says not to do, but he tells you to in this because he just loves you that much. So just give it a shot. That's my new favorite phrase. Give it a shot. Try it out. See what he does. Anyway, back to verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord. That right there is huge, 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 huge. And that explains the covenant. I'll get to that in like two seconds. But back to verse 12. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. So. All that the Lord is saying right there is basically going, test me guys, just do it. I ask for 10%, do it in obedience and see what I do. I will rebuke the devourer for your name. Remember, what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine. So for example, all the Lord's saying is, if you honor the covenant, the relationship, okay? Covenant equals relationship. If you honor the covenant made by Abraham with me, that means whatever's yours is mine and what's mine is yours. So for any enemies that we have, any things that are stressful, any things that, that may want to hurt us or like bullies at school or anxiety or, or worry or, or, or anger or things that, that kind of bog us down, um, he basically says, those enemies you have, if you honor me with your tithe, I now can take those up as my enemies. And in turn, the blessings he has are now our blessings. Hopefully that makes sense. But the coolest thing in all of this, in all of this, even to point it back to Jesus, which I'm so grateful that I get to do because if you search for it, everything always points back to him, which is honestly the coolest thing ever. When it talks about tithe in the Old Testament, you can go look it up, it's in Malachi. Anytime that tithing is brought up, it speaks specifically about new wine and grain. Now, I don't know about you guys, but bread comes from grain and communion is what? You guys remember, flash forward, we're all the way in the Old Testament now. Now we're gonna go all the way to the New Testament. In the New Testament, the Last Supper, Jesus sits down with the disciples and he goes, this is my body that is broken for you, which is bread. And this is my blood, which is poured out for all your sins, which was wine. So us honoring the Lord with our tithe is us completing the covenant made with the Father. So every time that we tithe, we are honoring and showing a reverence or respect. We are being obedient, being obedient to the Lord who asks us to do this so that he can bless us and protect us and rebuke the devourer, which is huge. It's huge, huge. If you honor him with your tithe, he can step in and protect you. And he already does it already. But now that you know what to do, and if you choose not to do it, it makes things a little bit more difficult. Why wasn't I getting protected? Well, you didn't give me the authority to. Does it make sense? So by tithing, we allow him to step in and be that father that he wanted to be for us way, 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 way back in the day. Anyway, we love you guys. Shortest video I've ever done and just totally awesome. I'll catch you guys next time. Patty. Hey. Go ahead. Oh. Hey, boys and girls. My name's King Cowboy Carl. And, and I'm this, this punch, here's pun uh, And I'm Punch Pete. And I'm punching Pete. Oh. We call him Nicholas sometimes. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nicholas. <laughs> Classic. All right, boys and girls. Welcome to Spiritual Set the Fence. Spiritual Set the Fence. I don't know if you noticed, but we got a little new get up. Yep. We both got new hats. It's been a while since you uh, since doing? seen us, so we decided to coordinate our outfits. We sure did. Except for, wait, I think your shirt's a little. Rule number one of being a cowboy, boys and girls. Rule number one. Cowboys don't wear sleeves. Cowboys don't, what, ow! What in the, hey. Hey, I like this. Now we're talking. Uh oh, they're gonna see the tape. I don't know it was a, It wasn't a setup. It wasn't a setup. It wasn't a setup. No, that was a real genuine. Hey, who put this tape on the inside of my t-shirt? That, that was a real genuine sleeve rip. 
Today we're talking about the tithe. The tithe. All right, so y'all y'all heard some good teaching and stuff on the tithe. And That's rule right. number one, when you tithe, it's like it's like the God God says he's going to rebuke the devourer for you. And so That's a beautiful thing about the tithe. Beautiful when you thing. tithe, listen, if I said it once, I'll say it a thousand say times. Say it a thousand times. When you tithe, when you it's tithe. like a punch in the gut to the devil. That's <laughs> I'll say it again, too. Don't, don't when say it you again. tithe, it's like a punch in the gut to the devil. We don't need to <laughs> What's that? You didn't hear me? I got. I <clears throat> said when you tithe, it's like a <clears throat> <clears throat> Take it easy. I said when you tithe, <clears throat> it's like a punch in the gut throat to, to the, the devil. Go! <clears throat> it's like a punch in the throat to the devil. If I said it once, I say it a thousand. <clears throat> <clears throat> You're right? He's all right. <coughs> Cut that for a second. <coughs> that was a good one. So, <coughs> like, like we, oh, cover your mouth. <coughs> remember to cover your mouth when you cough. Yeah, remember to cover your mouth when you cough. <coughs> so, like, like we were saying, spiritual self-defense 101. You know, spiritual self-defense 101. Dip, the devil says, d no, dang it. Sorry. Listen, I'll play the devil, okay? He's gonna play the devil, okay? So, the devil's like a roaring lion, sick and ah. to devour. But, listen, you, tithe, you don't need to tithe. But when you, you should keep that money for yourself. And, and anytime the you devil comes talking in your ear like percent, when he comes to just it, keep it. Let me God, oh, I would be in the devil. See how annoying he is? Super annoying. You just wanna punch him in the face. Yeah, or kick him in the chest. Hey! Hey, I kicked him. Oh? I mean, devil? No. Carl? You? So remember, stay spiritually aware. Now remember, boys and girls, when the devil, he's going to come and try to steal your seed that you just planted, okay? Steal. So when he does, steal. well, you just got to grab steal. him like this, okay? And grab him by the collar. Grab him by the collar. Or grab him by the arm. It yeah. don't matter. And then you just say, hey, no, look here. I'm a child of God. <laughs> and you, you just flip the little guy. And he don't know what to do. Yeah, take that, that devil. Because you're, you're a child of God. You say, hey, God God rebukes the devourer on my behalf. You say, you let him. <laughs> oh, good Lord. And you just stand in your place as a child of God. Because God will take care of it for you. Yeah, if you stand it for God, he'll stand it for you. And remember, my name is Kicking Cowboy Carl, and you can buy our tapes for $59.99. John, it's www.365.com. That's right, because it's spiritual self defense. And I'm <laughs> punch, kicking cow. What's my name? I'm kick. Oh, punch Pete. Hey, punch Pete! Punch Pete! This year's Punch Pete, and I'm Kicking Cowboy Carl. And you've been watching spiritual self defense. <laughs>. What's up boys and girls? Hey, really quick, you guys just heard from Mr. Caleb and he was talking about tithes, right? And I'm going to talk about offerings and your first fruits. So I want to, I, I know we talk about this all the time. The tithe is what? It's your 10%. It's your first 10. Uh, the offering is anything above and beyond that or in addition to that. So we're going to talk about this other way of giving and it's giving your first fruits. So your first fruits, let me tell you guys right now, the motivation behind giving an offering is living a generous life. We are supposed to have a generous heart. We're supposed to give uh, what God's word says to every good works. So anytime we see somebody that is in need, yes, we have the alms giving. But anytime there's a ministry that comes through or a speaker, a pastor, or uh, let's say you guys are traveling, you guys go to another church or something, you guys can always bring an offering to God through that. So really quick, uh, in our church, I know that we do this a lot when a guest speaker comes through the house and they give something, we can always give a love offering. That is an offering, that is a way that we can give to that. But it comes from a generous heart. So I want you guys to remember, when you guys have a generous heart, we can pour out. I mean, have you guys ever had an abundance of something and you guys can always give it out? That's literally what God does. He gives us so much that we're able to pour it out to our friends, to our family, uh, to people in need. So again, really quick, you can give this offering to the, to the church, you can give it to the minister if you so choose. And that's what's really cool is God allows us to do that. But I want to give you guys a point really quick. 
the offering, what it does is it actually breaks the voice. It breaks the voice of the spirit of mammon. So how many times you guys have something in your wallet or some money and you don't want to give it to somebody? Well, that's probably not you. That's probably the spirit of mammon speaking to you. It's preventing you from giving that. So one way that we can break that voice is by giving an offering. And it can show that money doesn't rule your life, right? God wants your heart. And if your wallet, if your heart's in your wallet, I mean, I, I can't do that. I could try to put my heart in my wallet, just doesn't work. But God wants your heart. So if your heart's there, the best way to break it is give what's in there. We can give that offering. You see, the other thing is uh, uh, giving an offering, giving your first fruits, shows your love for God, right? When you love him, you love his word, you have no problem giving up your possessions. And that's what the church did. When they, for the church first got together, they gave out their possessions. They, 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 they gave almsgiving to people. They gave first fruits. And, and God's word says to make sure that, uh, that we bless those in the house, that we bless the saints, but we also give to the church. So I want to remind you guys that as you, you have an abundance, your thankful heart, uh, you, you're able to pour out from that point. Hey, leaders, I want you guys to write this verse down. And when we get into small groups, I want you guys to read this little section of 2 Corinthians. So it's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and it starts uh, at verse 10. And it goes down to the end of the chapter. I'm not going to read it here because it's kind of long, but I will read one part. And the one part says that by their approval of their service, they will glorify God because of the submission that comes through the confession of the gospel. That's the love of God's word, right, and what he has done and the generosity, your contribution for them and all the others. So it talks about us uh, out of the uh, abundance of the love in us, we can give and we can give to the church and we can give to the ministers that come through, but it's just a way of exposing your heart to, to the Father's heart. And this is a connection that we can have by giving. And so you just wanna make sure that uh, when you're giving, uh, your offering or anything above your tithe, this is a great way to just connect to God. This is a way to feel his love. And this is a way to, to live out the gospel by giving out of your generous heart. So with that, I'm gonna leave you guys. Uh, again, we went through the tithe, we went through the offering or our, our first fruits, and just letting you guys know that get creative in the way you give. Yes, give your tithe, but let's give offerings. Let's go above and beyond because that's who God has given us. He has given us the grace that surpasses everything. I mean, he gives us peace. He gives us love. He's given us the salvation. Why wouldn't we give above and beyond of our earthly possessions? So I love you kids, and I'll see you next time.